Hi and welcome to another Pictowave tutorial. Today we're going to talk about a couple of new features that were introduced in version 3.8. Uh, to check your version simply go help and about and the version will be displayed here. Uh, you can download the latest uh, version from the, the website. Um, so if you don't see these functions uh, you need to download a new version. So first of all if we go to the edit menu the first of our new functions is called remove empty grid lines so uh, this is so that if we set up a grid we'll say we'll do a quick 60 by 60 create a um, a weave pattern here um, you can see that there's a lot of empty space around it so if we were to, if we were to uh, create our left list at this point in time we'd have empty lines above and below uh, our actual weave so by going remove empty grid lines all the um, uh, empty lines around it are removed and uh, when we create our left list we've got only those parts related to the weave. Uh, the next new tool, if you go to the tools menu, is quick text creation. So this is to uh, quickly create single layer uh, name weaves etc. So we'll go ahead and open that and you can see that um, we have a text area where we can put in our text that we want to weave. We've got a font size which is related to the number of threads uh, on our main screen uh, and we've got some measurements so the measurements are calculated by the size of the thread that we selected on our main screen so if we increase our font size here you can see there's a whole bunch of measurements changing so we'll, um, we'll stop it at 90 and you can see that it's showing 22 millimeters but that 22 millimeters is all the way from the top to the bottom of the white area. Now each font leaves um, white space above and below for line spacing and things like the tail on a P or a lowercase y etc. Uh, on the right here we see uh, the calculations for the actual text area so the approximate amount of threads covered by text here is 53 the approximate height using uh, plane A is 13 millimeters. If I change the font you will see that these change because this particular font leaves different amounts of white space top and bottom. You can see that the tail of the P doesn't go all the way to the bottom so even though the actual font size remains the same the covered area of the text changes. So all we need to do is type in the actual text that we want to weave, set the size until we get approximately the height that we want to in the end. So I'm going to make it about 14 millimeters. That should give me uh, plenty of area to um, to get a reasonably good looking weave. Um, I can make it bold. I can make it italic. But you can see if I make it italic, uh, it may clip off the end. So it might be required to add space before and after. We, we can already always remove this extra white space later. So just decide, I think I prefer it in an italic. You can underline it, you can strike out etc. Um, then we have the option to automatically trim the white space off later so all this area will automatically be taken off or if we uncheck it we can manually do it later. I'll leave it checked. We'll go ahead and create our weave. Uh, it asks you to save a bitmap. The bitmap is simply used in the auto grid uh, utility which is the second half of the process. So it brings up the auto uh, grid painting utility, puts in all the relevant data like the colour and the, uh, the excluded background colour and uh, commences creating your weave. You can see it uh, churns through fairly rapidly. Uh, we're almost done. Uh, now it'll go back to our main window automatically remove all our excess uh, white space and if we zoom right out we can see that we've got our completed weave uh, ready to go. Um, if I scroll around the extremities uh, you can see 
that all we need to do is create our lift list and um, start weaving. It is worthwhile though to just slowly go around the weave and uh, make sure that nothing looks too jagged or um, anything like that. You may still need to uh, do the odd bit of touch up here and there. The other thing you can do is um, if you go to preview design um, as if you were going to print your uh, actual design then remove fit to page and adjust the scale until this print height here matches the design height which is 14 millimeters so we'll just adjust the scale down until we get approximately 14 millimeters you can then print that go and cut it out, lay it on your rod and you get a pretty good indication of exactly how it's going to look on your rod. So that's uh, the new functions in a nutshell. I hope they prove useful and I look forward to seeing your work. Thank you.